and welcome to Q&A Tuesday. So I thought we would start off with the first question that I got today and the question comes from Donna and she asked me, oh sorry, how else do people attract clients other than word of mouth and meetups? So thank you Donna for that great question because I think that a lot of people are struggling with, okay, how do I attract my ideal client? And the next question I'm gonna be answering is going to be figuring out your niche client, but for right now, I wanna know how do I attract them? So, one of the things I wanna start off with is that attracting your ideal client starts with building a relationship with them. So they need to know, like, and trust you before they're even interested in anything that you have to offer them. So it begins by actually connecting with them, being like them, um, speaking to them. If they like to be casual, being casual, you want to be relatable to them. And then it means how are they even going to find you? So they're gonna find you by doing things a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Now video, as you may have heard, is the biggest, best, and easiest way for you to start attracting uh, clients because they instantly get to see you. They get to hear you speak. They feel like they're having a conversation with you. And you can show a bit of yourself in those videos. It doesn't have to be perfect. By all means, you guys know that my videos are not perfect. They're live and that's what people really like about them. Again, that goes back to being relatable. And it's gonna take some time for you to build up that trust factor. They need to try out some of your content before they're going to actually trust you and want to purchase from you or wanna work with you. So you wanna be putting out really valuable content. You want to be giving a lot at the beginning and you want to be sharing parts of yourself, right? So if I talk about a story, that makes you feel like you know me a little bit more. I am more human if you can relate to me in that way. If you see that my life is no different than your life, it has crazy things going on and not everything is always working out and sometimes I wake up not feeling well and sometimes I wake up super energized. So they want to know that you're a real human just like they are and it makes them feel like if you're able to do all this stuff then you can help them do it. So if what you're doing is related to their life then they feel like you can help them. Okay so now I want to talk about how or where do you even go to maybe do video, to post valuable content. So one of the things I teach in my course, my Leap Into Ladypreneurship course, is about Facebook. Using Facebook, using Facebook groups, using Facebook posts, using Facebook ads to grow your following, to attract clients. So some of the things you could do is starting your own Facebook group. And I know I started this group out of nowhere and I was really nervous about it and I didn't even know how it was gonna go or even how I was gonna keep up with providing content for everyone. But again, you start small. You do consistent action and create a group that is actually valuable for other people. Ask them what they want. Again, this goes back to nurturing them, getting to know them, building a true deep connection, not just a surface level connection that makes them feel like you're just trying to sell something to them. You actually wanna care about them. So this isn't really about um, quantity, it's about quality. You want quality followers, not 100,000 followers who have maybe liked something you posted one time but don't ever come back. Again, coming back to you is going to, if you give them um, information that helps them, they're gonna come back to you. That's gonna make them say, wow, I just got so much out of that, I should go back and see what else she can help me with. So giving valuable content and providing something that actually serves people is going to attract them more to you. It's also gonna spread the word, I know you said outside of word of mouth, but if somebody's really loving your content, 
they are definitely going to talk about it with other people and uh, that's only going to grow your following. So Facebook groups, you can start your own, but you can also go into Facebook groups and provide value. So you might not want to specifically be selling your services, but what can you do or what can you share that would actually help someone? And if you don't want to share something necessarily, I did this in my detox challenge actually, is that you can go in and help somebody. Maybe comment on something that someone posts. Maybe uh, offer some advice or tips when somebody asks a question. So go into groups where you think that your ideal client might be and start talking to them, start connecting with them, start really truly creating a deep connection. So Facebook groups is a great place to do it. Facebook ads is insanely powerful. So one of the things I work on in my Leap Into Ladypreneurship group is that we create a lead magnet and that helps us gain um, email addresses. So a lead magnet is just something they can download, something for free, something that you're gonna send to them that's for free, that's high value, that they really want, and that gives them a lot of information and gives them a taste of what you do and what you can help them with. So by creating a lead magnet, you can then advertise on Facebook for that, which will bring in people that you definitely don't know because Facebook is going to choose, you're going to choose the audience and then Facebook is going to show your, uh, your lead magnet or your advertisement to those people and then they're going to download it, they're going to give you their email address and then you um, have their information to speak with them more plus they're getting a taste of you. So. I think that the stat, I should really check this, but I think the stat about before someone's going to buy something from you is that they need to have had seven to 10 interactions with you before they're willing to purchase something from you. So that could be seeing a post that you wrote. That could be seeing a video you wrote. That could be getting an email from you or seeing your advertisement or um, interacting with you in a group or see, even just seeing you interacting in a group will help them kind of get to know you. So you want them to get to know you and trust you and then want more. You leave them wanting more. So Facebook groups, Facebook ads, even Instagram. I speak to a lot of people on my Instagram account. So you want to be putting out content. Now something that drives me absolutely mad is when people share things on Facebook, on their Facebook business page, on Instagram, on Twitter, whatever it is, when people share stuff and they don't add anything of themselves to that content. Like if I wanted to see someone else's content that's not yours, then I would go to that place myself. I want to get to know you. Why are you even sharing this content with me? So if you're going to share somebody else's content, make sure you're adding something to it. Make sure you're adding a description or make sure you're adding something of you. So again, that they're getting to know you and it's not just that you're sharing someone else's content with them. That's going to be super important in your Facebook group as well. If you start your own Facebook group, because you do not want to just use your Facebook group as a con like basically as your own newsfeed. You want to be getting into your Facebook group, providing value for the reason that they joined, exclusive value, stuff like this, doing a video, asking them what they want, polling, providing information, exclusive stuff, because otherwise, what's the point in being in your group? What's the point in following you if you're never sharing content that is actually yours? And it doesn't need to be elaborate. It could be one sentence, but providing content that has some of you in it is going to be super key to them developing a no like and trust factor. If you just provide other people's content, then you're just advertising for other people. Okay. So providing content that's super high value, creating a lead magnet and using Facebook ads, um, doing videos, doing, uh, starting your own Facebook group, uh, and speaking in other people's Facebook groups are some ideas. Uh, oh, I also wrote um, getting on somebody's podcast, being featured somewhere. 
those are really great ways to get your brand out, to get your message out, and for again, for them to hear and develop that know, like, and trust factor for you. So you wanna step into that expert role and offer to, or ask people that have a podcast, for example, if they would be interested in interviewing you. Now, again, you wanna tell them why do are you a good fit for their podcast? Why should they interview you? What do you bring to the table? What is, how is it good for their listeners? So do your research and make a good case for why they will benefit from having you on their podcast. What do you bring to that? So being featured on a podcast, being featured in a Facebook group, being featured on somebody's email list, being featured in a magazine, being featured at a conference. So all of these ways you can get your message out to a different and a wider audience by putting yourself out there. I didn't say that it would be easy, but I did say that it would be worth it. Not all these things are easy, but they are worth it because it does get your message out there and it does uh, widen your audience, right? So outside of your own network, which is what you wanna be doing. And most of these things are online. So though they may be scary, they can be done from the comfort of your own house. Let's be real, I have done a video in my pajamas before, in my bedroom, right before I was about to go to bed. Um, so that's the wonderful joy of the online world is that use it to your advantage because you can do it from anywhere. Um, let me just see if I left anything off. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so the other things that I said, so I did talk about content and I talked about how you wanna be producing your own content. So one of the things that I highly recommend is if you do make some time, maybe one day per week, which is what I do, and create some graphics that are your own for the content that you're sharing. Because if that becomes shareable content, if you're creating graphics or if you're creating a post that's something that's gonna interest other people and they're gonna wanna share it with their network, then it has your brand on it. So they know it's yours and they might inquire, oh, who is that? Who created this wonderful graphic or this wonderful post? I'm gonna go check them out. And the last way that I thought about um, offering uh, to attract clients is live trainings. So not so much doing live videos, which again, I said that was the first uh, one I would choose, but is also doing live trainings like webinars or teleclasses because one, people can do it from anywhere at any time. I know I've definitely watched webinars while I was walking or on the go or even just the replay. But again, in a webinar, they really get to see you as the expert. They really get to experience what you have to offer and why they wanna work with you, why you're a good fit for them. And it's also a really great way for them to develop a relationship with you. So all of this, all of the stuff that I'm telling you to do is all the underlying thing is build a deep connection because relationships are what create a successful business and they are the cornerstone of everything that you do. So be thinking of how can I be of service to another and that's the way that you're gonna grow your business, by being of service, by providing really high value content and by stepping into that expert role and being in your zone of genius, doing your thing and sharing it on a platform that is going to be seen by a wider audience than maybe just in your immediate network. So not just on your personal page, on your business page, on your Instagram page, on in groups. And that's the other thing. I don't recreate the wheel every single platform that I use. I repurpose all of this. So I might share a video here, but I might share it on my business page and my Instagram page and in my email list. I might use the same, um, use my email and cut it up to make different posts that I'm gonna use for those platforms. So don't think that you need to be recreating everything every time. It's create something really good and really high value and then use it and, you know, use it over and over again in those different platforms. Now, not the same day, maybe like a year apart, but you don't always have to be recreating information as long as it's high value information. Just reuse it, revamp it, give it a little bit of, um, a shine, change up the graphic, and 
put it out there because most likely the same people didn't see it the first time. They might not have been following you before. They might not have been in that space to be looking for that content then. Maybe they even missed it. Like realistically, your entire list doesn't see everything that you post anyways, so they might not even have seen it the first time, okay? So I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna start the next question in a separate video so that people don't get confused in terms of what each video is about. So I'll be back in about 30 seconds. Thank you, Donna, for the wonderful question.